Hey, this is Paul Payton with Focal Splash, and today I'm going to show you how to blur a background in Photoshop. And real quick, I'd like to show you how I would process this picture in Lightroom before taking it into Photoshop. First thing I'd do is go to the Basic panel and Auto White Balance. And sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. This time it looks pretty good. The next thing would be Auto Tone. And I think it's a little too bright with auto-tune, but some people would like it a little brighter, and there you have that. Because of that, I'd like to drop down the highlights a little bit. What we're doing is we're recovering the highlights. We don't want to drop them too far down because it would look shiny and gritty, but, you know, just a little bit. Just recover some of those hairs that would be lost in the brightness. And we'll bring up the shadows a little bit just to try to recover some detail in our tongue maybe. The whites we're going to leave alone because they're just about clipping and the blacks are already clipping so we'll leave them alone. I'd like to add a little bit of clarity here. If you add too much again looks kind of grungy, gritty. She's a lady so we'll, we'll not make her look like that. And I'll put this around 13 or so. And then uh, I like to scroll down go to effects. Alright, this is my new friend D. Hayes and it adds a lot of contrast into the picture. You can really add a lot or you can just add just a little bit and I tend to do this after Photoshop but we can do it right now. We just darken this uh, vignette a little bit. Not so much that you can see it but just draw it back to where you really can't see it but you know it's darkened and in this case around 20 something would be good and the midpoints. The midpoint is how far down the vignette goes. Just as a rule of thumb for me, I like to put it halfway between the roundness, which I leave at zero, and and uh, the amount. And then the feather, I like to put in a straight line. The feathering does is, see, that's zero feathering, and you know, as it goes, I like to have more feathering so that you see the vignette even less. And then I will like to take a, a brush here and put a little bit of light in her eyes. This uh, is very controversial for some people, but uh, starting off just to, just to have a starting point, I'm going to put this at one, one exposure up and clarity. I'm going to choose 50 and saturation 25 and sharpness 50. I'm going to sharpen up her eyes and noise 25. These are the settings that I would use just to begin to sharpen the eyes and to brighten them up a little bit. And we'll zoom in and we'll just start painting only in the iris. And you can see the before and after. That's before, that's after. See, not drastic. And just a little bit. And then zoom out and now we can see the before and after before and after and now we'll take it into Photoshop and in Photoshop the key is going to be getting the best selection you can so we'll start here with the quick select tool some people it says pen tool uh, okay if you want to use the pen tool go ahead and I'm selecting outside because I think that's the easiest way to get a good selection here pressing alt I'm gonna deselect right here just trying to get a really good selection just as a starting point here and that was looking pretty good all right and then I would hit control shift I that's what I would do you can use select inverse that'll change the selection to whatever wasn't selected is now selected and so we have her selected and then we'll hit select and mask and you see we have her on a black background and the selection looks pretty good I would uh, start off since we made a pretty good selection refine edge tool and hit smart radius here and it's gonna jump to 10 now is what it likes to do but I'm gonna put it to 5 I want it a little smaller and I'm thinking that's about what we're gonna do here and just get your brush to about the size you think you should and draw kind of right on the line doesn't have to be perfect but and going around real quick this is a pretty quick uh, tool and it's just refining the edge like it says just looking for the edge and, and uh, guessing well should this be part of the selection or not and then we'll bring the opacity back up and we'll look do we have a nice soft 
selection and it looks like we do maybe there's a bit of an issue right here let's hit the brush tool and hit the alt key hold it down and just deselect this part and let's just look around real quick and that looks fine it looks fine these look fine I'm not sure what's going on up here so I'm gonna add this to the selection yeah I thought the top of her head was part of the then hit alt just remove this green right here just like that and I think we have a pretty good selection so we'll zoom out we want to make this into a selection and hit OK alright now that we have a really good selection here uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and we're gonna invert that selection again command shift I is the way I do it like I said you can go here and hit inverse um, I love the shortcut keys which is some, something you should really learn makes things a whole lot faster instead of moving your mouse around so much alright so then we're gonna go to filter blur Gaussian blur which is the way we used to do it and we see when we blur the background by about 20 pixels of the Gaussian blur you can see that there is a halo around the subject this is common and there's ways to, to get it where you delete the subject so that the subject's not there and you know there's ways around that but uh, Photoshop has come up with another plan here you go to filter blur there's the blur gallery which is very awesome we'll do the same thing we have the field blur tilt shift blur you want to get familiar with those but uh, lens blur is what I'm going to use right now and with the lens blur at 53 you can put the lens blur to to uh, zero and that's what it was without any blur all the way up to a hundred which is the max blur that a lens could give yeah, that light room guesses here and or we could just bring it to something like 50 you know a really heavy duty lens here it's a nice blur and you know uh, blade aperture and things these are going to be more effective when there's l light spots in here so you want bokeh with big round glowing globes of of fuzzy white uh, that's what these settings are for um, I like to add just a little bit of noise people are like why would you add noise well when you zoom in you can see there's some noise and that's the way a lens really takes a picture uh, when it's blurry there's some noise back there if you take the noise completely out that's what happens when you blur an image in Photoshop is uh, the noise disappears it becomes blurry so just to make it more realistic I would add one or two depending on how many pixels are in your picture uh, noise and you get a much more realistic uh, blur and so I think that's it I think we have it and deselect this all right and I think that's a nice blur the only thing I see is in my mask I didn't do a really good job right here so I would actually stop the blur go back in and and mask this correctly so that it wouldn't look like that and just look around and no no problem with doing something again really quick and maybe I'd get that that whisker that was there and put it in but other than that I think it looks good we'll go ahead and close this window here and save it and it'll go right back into Lightroom where we can see the, bef the before and the after before and after now if you want to see the before uh, I, I did anything in Lightroom I'm gonna control I'm gonna create a virtual copy and it reset on it and this is what we had before Lightroom this is what we did after Lightroom and this is what we have with the blurred background if you have any questions or comments you think I did something wrong uh, you'd like to see more please give me a comment and uh, whether it's in Facebook or YouTube and I would uh, love to answer any questions you have have a good day